Oh, I'm live. Well, I knew that. Good morning. Um, I thought today was the the time change day, and so we clicked. Uh, we um, changed the clock. But when I got up, I I saw that my camera, my phone, was at the same time as the clock that I hadn't changed. So I guess it wasn't the time change yet. I guess that's on November the seventh. Anyway, but in I live in Ontario, Canada. But I, I thought that, um, well, I looked it up, and they said that they're going to not ever change them if New York and Quebec go along with it. That's, I think a bill was passed, perhaps? I, I never know, because they say this is the new rule, but then years later I'm finding out that it didn't pass or something, and it didn't come into effect, and so I'm not sure. It's a foggy morning out there, and the sun is now rising at 7.45. It took 45 minutes for the wood stove to light. I, Willem has been putting wood in beside the, was on the floor beside the wood stove. Yes, I know, the tiles are missing. Not everything stays perfect, you know. Things start out perfect, and it's the way of all the earth. Everything decomposes. You know, it's interesting to have lived long enough to have planted a tree and it's now giving incredible shade and towering over the house. In fact, I planted one tree when I was in my 20s. And it, when I went back to it, I don't know, 30 years later or something. Yes, I'm 66. Um, it was a huge, it was like a foot across, a stump. Well, maybe it wasn't a foot across. I think it might have been. What is a foot? It could have been. It was a pear tree, and I was very surprised that that, that had happened. My goodness, I have a mess. Hey, you know what? The reason I am making this video right now is because I didn't think I could make videos anymore. I had no idea how to do it, but I figured it out. You go to my channel... And then there was some menu that I hadn't tried before, and it dropped down, and it had in there upload a video. So the thing is, you know, when they change things on these devices, you're really good at it the way it was. You know, you think, I'm sailing through, I got this down, right? Like, I've created 18,000 videos. Of course, you can only access a few of them, it appears. Like, if you go to my channel, you get the playlists, and I don't know how you get into the old stuff, but... It's there. But um, they changed something, and the way I was used to doing it was no longer there. And I thought that something had happened, and I was blocked from it. Some people get all ready before they do a video. Not me. I was just trying to figure out if it was still possible. And then it it worked, and so I can do it. But it's I, I clicked on the Made for Kids thing because there's nothing about my videos that is not suitable for children. There's no swearing, there's no smoking, there's no bad language or, you know, corrupting ideas on here. So it's good for everybody, but I don't think you can comment. I've been putting them as not for kids so people could comment. But anyway, so I guess you can't comment. I'm distracted enough, eh? I distract myself. So my wood stove is starting to go, but I think maybe it's time to close it. I better close it before it burns up all the wood. But, um, mm, I've been, oh, let me unplug this and take you over here and we'll change this. I wash the window. Hey, you know how to wash the window? You just wipe it with vinegar. Juice. When you put them close together, then the heat from one goes to the heat from the other one. Alright. So, I'm going to close it now. It doesn't need to be very hot today. 
You want to see what it looks like outside in the morning? It's a beautiful place here. Look at this. Let's go in the other room and I'll show you from in there. Sometimes my house is very clean and sometimes it's not. It's better than it was, but it's not very clean. Sometimes I wake up and the, the animals are still out there. That's the dehydrator. Oops, you saw some of the mess. It's not too cold outside. It's raining. Did you know we got a roof put on here? Isn't that nice? And I put those wires, which don't look that great, I put them on there so that the grapes will grow on them. Look at that, I cut all the plants down. And all those garden beds are finished now. I don't think there's any more potatoes in them. Anyway, just had to show you that. So this is cool, I can make videos. I have set one to upload. I made a video of the sound of the stream and it was only 22 seconds long, but our internet here is ultra slow. But somehow I can make videos that just go up, which is why everything is live videos now instead of recorded. But that other one is gonna be, it may upload. It's kind of neat. I, I used to make videos all the time. So, I'm 66 years old, and some of you will think, oh my gosh, you're so old, you're too old to even be alive. It's amazing how many people older than me are still left. It's really interesting. I, I looked it up, or I asked my device, what, um, what were the things that happened to your body when you aged? I asked what happens to your skin. Do you know that in your 60s, your skin thins and stretches and also develops a papery thing? See, it looks pretty good right there, but but at times, like, anyway, I won't bother to show you. You'll find out soon enough. And it'll happen to all of you unless you win the Darwin Award. <laughs> the Darwin Award, you don't know what that is? Well, the Darwin Award, ha we used to look it up. It's... People that have met with death because of their own um, their own stupidity, their own um, you know. Anyway, that's but um, so that's one thing that happens when you age. You remember Mary Kay? Like I sold Mary Kay for a while, and not that I was a makeup user, but. It just seemed like a good idea, but Willem didn't like it if I used makeup because when he kissed me, he didn't want to kiss lipstick. So you just have my real face. It's always just been my real face. Um, anyway, um, distractions. My mind distracts me. I have birds. I've been feeding the birds out here. I have this other little um, roof over this area now. You can't see anything but the reflections. I have a whole bunch of bags of fleece from different kinds of animals. There's llama and what's that other kind? Alpaca and cashmere goats. Anyway, a bunch of different kinds of fleece. I have too much to use and I'm not sure who to share it with but I will share some anyway um, what was I gonna say see there it is gone again anyway I put the bird feeder out there and the birds are coming into that nice protected area place now we had a, a freezer stuck in the doorway we tried to get it out of the family room, which is the room adjoining the kitchen, which was an addition we had put on. I have been so blessed in my life. You know, and if you think that, oh, this person has more, this person has more, this person has more, my whole life, everybody out there had more. And I think I was about 60 when we put an addition on the house. And, you know, we always think that we want what everyone else has. We want to have a house filled with furniture that looks nice and 
you know, whatever. I chose to be a mom at home. I raised five children, and my husband had a job, and so we couldn't live in the city where it was expensive, so we moved to the country. Well, first we moved to a small town, but, um, and then the interest rates went down, and we were able to buy a place in the country for the same price as we were selling our, the price of out here was more, but we were able to afford it because it was not going to put our mortgage up our payments up. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. But it's important, oops, it's important that we be content. What is all this there? Now I touched something and now I've got all these pictures of myself on there. How do you get rid of that? Not a clue. Once again, I'm clueless. I could touch that. Oh, it went away. <laughs> um, I write in my journal a lot. Do you write in your journal? I have, I go through, I go through these notebooks probably about once every two months. I love to write. It, it's so good for me, you know? So I'm, um, I don't know if I want to get into all of my life at this moment. Except just to say good morning. It's so nice that I can make videos again. I've been playing Minecraft. Yes, at 66. I think I started it at 65. My, how old is Daniel now? 30? It's always a shock. When those numbers change, it doesn't matter. Once you get past your 20s, the numbers seem shocking. I used to forget what age I was when I was in my 30s. But you always know when the big number changes, and it's always a shock. I mean, imagine, you know, when you're young and turning 40 is like, oh, and then you get used to being 40, and all of a sudden it's 50. No way, I can't be 50. That's way old. And then you get to be 60. It's like, oh, my gosh, how could this be possible? I'm older than God. <laughs> Not really. And then you find out that you say it to people who are older than you, I can't believe I'm 60, and they say, well, I'm 73. You think, really? You know, well, yes, but you're old. Like, and when any, anybody that's older than you, you think of them as old, and they're used to being old, and that's their thing. But you know what? When you turn 70, I suppose, when you turn 60 or 50 or 40, it's like, whoa, this doesn't happen to me. I'm young. And you know what? We are, we are not our bodies. You know, I mean, I have flies in here. Um, you're not your body. Your spirit is shaped like your body, made in the image of God, and it is fitted like a glove. Your body is like a glove over your spirit. And when you die, your spirit leaves your body. Your body sleeps in the grave, but you're not in there. You go on. There's trailing clouds of glory do we come from God who is our home. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow is an awesome poet. You know what? When I lived in Teaneck, New Jersey, back in, I was really young, I guess. Well, we left there when I was seven or six. I was in kindergarten in first grade and second grade. My birthday was in September, so, and we moved in June. We moved to Georgia from Teaneck. Anyway, whatever. When I went to, in Teaneck, I went to Longfellow Elementary School. And I guess that's probably one of the reasons that Henry Wadsworth Longfellow was of interest to me. There was a movie called they showed it in Salt Lake at the Temple Visitor Center. And I went in there and I watched it over and over and over. I can't remember what it was, but it included this poem from Henry Wadsworth Longfellow that, not in entire forgetfulness, but trailing clouds of glory do we come from God who is our home. You know, people often think, well, this can't be all there is to life, especially going through the pandemic. 
all these things that were taken away, I found out how important people are in my life. I started going down to the to the grass hut affair down there. I'd love to be able to video from down there. I could video onto my lap onto my phone and then try to upload it. But it won't upload in my house. We've got very slow internet. But I can we can watch Netflix and do all things. I have all these notifications. I've got my phone turned sideways so that it doesn't end up with blurry stuff on the sides. I don't like the way they do that. So, which topic that I have started do you think I should finish telling you about? I wanted to show you the view from all the windows in the house. We have all these picturesque views. But you know, then that goes right over to the fact that when you post something, it's become a very common thing that people really want to see the likes and that that's important to people, to see the likes. But that is not where you should be getting your security and your good feelings about yourself. You know, that's not the place to find that. And if you are getting all of your information from social media, it is dampening your ability to hear the promptings of the Spirit. It's important that you don't depend on other people. You know, people post their best pictures, their best everything. I don't. I just post whatever. I mean, you get to see my hair without being brushed. And this dress, I got this at the dump. Yes, the dump. It's a reuse center. It's not really like pulled out of the garbage or yucky stuff. It's um, if you have things that you don't want, it goes to the building. And if, if you have stuff that is garbage, it goes into the dump or recyclable. It goes into those things. And so this reuse center, there's hundreds of videos from the reuse center on here. But we, I, I have furnished our house mostly from the reuse center until my mother and father and brother have all died and now I I emptied their house that was quite a job who would have thought that it was left to me to empty how long did they live there I'm 66 so I guess they lived there well not 60 years because yeah I guess the house was occupied by my family for about 62 years 64 years Anyway, I came back in February, just before the pandemic and the shutdown. But now I have furniture that is not all from the dump. Of course, some of it I made. Like, I made that little table there. This one here. And I made this little table here. And there's another little, two tables under there. I had to bring them in off the deck, so. But that was from my mom's house. My mom recovered it. It used to be green, I think. And then she recovered it with the yellow, but that really looks pretty bad now. And that's from my son. They have very fine furniture. But I guess it has a few scratches on it, and that never bothered me. And this one I bought in Connecticut at a estate sale. See my mirrors? Those are mirrors all on the wall. Because the room was too small. And I didn't want to sit and look at the wood stove, so I put mirrors there which now look out into this neat room, which you can't see because everything is reflected. But up there, it's cloudy and foggy. It's nice when the weather is bad outside and you can't go out, you know? Did you find that during the lockdown that you enjoyed being in the house? Depends where you were, I guess. A lot of people are le have left the cities and have, lots of people around here have sold their properties. I think they've gone to places like Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. So you get a lot of money here for your property now, and then you go somewhere where it's cheaper. Look at that nice fire. Isn't that looking lovely? It's nice to clean the window. See, there's a bottle of vinegar. There's, my brain is not like most people's brains, but there are people whose brains are like mine. Distracted all the time by yourself. But also, there are two, there are two separate things. There's doing stuff, 
like you have a project, you're going to find the clicker for the television, or you're going to, you know, touch up the scar marks on things with this little pen which is sitting there, or you're going to, whatever, you're going to do something, but you have to go get stuff first. So you get it out of the place you get it, and usually in bringing it out, you've had to move other things, and so now, or they fell on the floor, so now there's a mess. But you're not distracted by the mess. Ha! I cannot be distracted by messes. Isn't that a great technique? But what happens then is that in my mind, cleaning is one job. Finding the clicker is another job. Cooking is one job. Cleaning up is a totally different thing. And that you have a certain mood for when you're going to clean. And first you have to see the mess. And I don't see the mess unless I'm showing it to you and then I notice, oh, or if I take a picture of it, I guess that's one way to see if you have a mess, is to take a photo of it and look at the photo. And then you can see all the items and you can enumerate where they go. But you see, usually I'm too busy to even care about that. Lately on Minecraft, which I play with my grandchildren, I figured out how to make a duck. How, not a real duck, but you have these things, these banners, so you can make a picture on a banner there's different shapes, which are just lines and stuff. And I had no idea how to use all that. But it turns out that you don't make banners that have lines on them. You pick a line, you pick a banner, a colored banner, and you pick a line, and you put, pick a color. And the color goes in the middle, and the banner goes under it. And over to the side, you may have a flower, a regular flower that you've gotten from somewhere in the game. You put the flower over there, and then you get a banner with the flower on it. I wonder if you can do that with, <laughs> here I go, interesting ideas. But anyway, so I made a duck. There's this guy on YouTube. It's a few initials. can't remember. And there's wiki crafts. And they're very short video. They're, they're a video that are, con like there's one that's called 100 hacks, 100 mini hacks. And so they'll teach you like how to, how to make a well or how to make a, a bench, or a picnic table, or a barbecue, or, you know, and in Minecraft, everything is blocks. But there's also things like pressure plates, which are flat, and you step on them and something opens. And so you have power in there, you, you know, redstone, so you can power something, so you can make, you can make a train track that goes all around in a circle and then comes back, or, or go up over mountains with train tracks and have roller coaster rides with your grandchildren. Or you can ha make a waterfall that comes, you know, you just click a bucket of water, you just click it once on top of a mountain, and then you have this huge flowing river that goes down the mountain. And it peters out somewhere and it just doesn't go anywhere after a while, but unless you go down there and add another bucket. Or partly down but you can click a boat you can craft a boat it just takes cutting down a tree it's all very simple you craft a boat put the boat on the top of the water and you can go for a boat ride down the waterfall it's so much fun and if you put it on creative mode there's no monsters there's no bad stuff that's where I live no monsters but of course my grandchild he likes to, to craft withers and withers are this creature that has three heads and it twists around and it blows up everything in its pathway. Well, so if you put a wither, it'll make a great big hole in the ground. And so then, then you use a command block and kill the withers. <laughs> yes, a command block. To get a command block, you could slash give at P, which is to closest person, which is always yourself. So it's slash give at P space. Is there a space there? Yeah, yeah, space, command underscore block, and you get a command block, and then you go into the command block, and you can type in there, kill, at E, which is every, at is to every, kill at E, then a bracket, one of those straight brackets, type, T-Y-P-E equals, no spaces, type equals wither close bracket and all of a sudden all the withers will die or all the cows or all the horses or all of whatever if you've been playing with the spawning eggs and you've spawned 700 million turtles you just do that and all the turtles are gone I don't like killing things but anyway 
it it cleans up, especially if your grandchild likes to to spawn creepers. Ugh. He spawns creepers, and then he does something to them, and then they blow up everything, and so they're going to blow up everything you've made. So anyway, that's how I get rid of them. Those are cheats enabled in order to do all that on creative mode. Where was I going with this? Oh, anyway, so he made this big hole, and so I decided I was going to make a meteor shower. So I'm going to make these balls up in the air that are coming toward the earth. And there's this kind of brick that you, block that you can get that's got yellow, it's a black with yellow orange in it all over, and it's cracked. And so when these children, they love to take the bucket of water and tap on everything. And before you know it, there's everything is covered in water. Everything is like these mounds of water. And it washes away all the tracks and everything you put in there. But they'll do that with lava, too. And to get rid of lava, there's always, everything is block by block. So there'll be one block where everything is flat. And every other block, you can see directional arrows in it where everything is moving. It's really pretty to watch. But anyway, so you just click on that flat one, and it'll take away the entire lava storm, the whole, whole mound of lava. Anyway, so I could make these meteors out of this block. So when Zane puts, he puts them on lava on top of all of the trees, and so you get these mounds of trees, which then burns everything up, including the stem, everything. So I take these blocks, it's black stone something, and, and I pile them up and make it look like a tree stump. So it looks like the fire has ravaged through and all that remains are these stumps. It's very good. It's coal-like. I think I'll make the meteors out of that. Anyway, I love playing with my grandchildren on there. But my goodness, children certainly do different things than adults do. Like I'm very busy learning how to make a duck on a banner and there's a, you can put picture frames, and in a picture frame, depending on where you put it, it will be a different size according to the space. Well, he went around inside the beautiful house I built. I built a house that had a, had a, um, it was a resort on the edge of the water. It was beautiful. And then he went and put these picture frames everywhere on all the windows. The house was mostly windows. He put picture frames everywhere, and there's, you know, skulls and monster. It's just not, they're not nice pictures. They're Minecraft mm, monster stuff. And so I went and I made banners and I, I figured out from this guy, which has got RTF or something, I don't remember, but it's under Minecraft, um, how to build banners, how to make a banner. Anyway, so he, he made, he made a duck banner. He made lots of different kinds of flags, but a duck, a penguin, a fox, and a cat. So I learned how to use the loom. See, I have my own loom over there, which this is where I put things to dry. But um, anyway, so on this in this loom, you can create stuff with the banner. So then I went around my house, and where he had put all these skulls and everything, and he had run out of. There were these long, there's pictures of one a person walking and. Uh, and one turned sideways. It looks like it's out of some kind of a comic book or something. But anyway, they're not bad ones. But so, but that's where my banners could fit. So I covered his place instead of those things. I where there were duplicates. I put a duck and a cat and a penguin and a fox. And then I went over to a mountain and I put banners all around the mountain. I put them in groups, you know, like that. But if he puts lava on it, it'll all be gone. So playing with grandchildren is not without its bumps. Minecraft for grandparents. I think it's great. I I have this um, one world where I don't let the grandchildren in, where I built the house that we lived in when we lived in another town, and I built this house. But you know, one block is like a meter wide a cubic meter, and so if you try and build your kitchen out of blocks and put room enough for the sink and everything, everything becomes a mansion. But I grew, I, I built the house my parents, where I grew up in, in Georgia. It was a pretty beautiful house. 
I had no idea how beautiful it was until I went back as an adult. It had really fine wooden floors. We, I always wished that we had carpets like Becky, my friend across the road. Hi, Becky, if you watch this. But um, we had hardwood floors. I didn't realize hardwood floors were better than carpets. The carpets actually ruined after a while, whereas hardwood floors didn't. But my house is made for me and not me for the house. And so I, I don't spend my life protecting my house. If it gets scratches on the floor and scuffs on the walls, you know, it would probably be good if I painted. I painted my house once. I painted this room once, twice. I thought it looked re really neat when you had bumps. Anyway, eventually I had to paint over it. <sighs> but you see, that would be a project that would include moving many things. My parents didn't paint the rooms. We, when we were kids, we painted our bedrooms. I painted one ball of my bed, 16 I guess, I painted one wall in checkers, like it was green and white checkered blocks and I had all my people that came and stayed over I'd have them sign my wall and of course that wall is still there but it's been covered by paint be interesting to take off a layer of paint at a time and see what's under them all anyway but painting is a whole different thing oh I was going to tell you about my freezer that was stuck in the doorway and see, and then I got from the freezer to the new room where it was in. And then the new room led to having everything you want when you're young, being 60 when you have it, actually. And then that went to YouTube, which was about, um, see, but now I got a new idea. Can't go back. So my new, new thought is I have dyslexia. So I will look at a, a number, like, well, I'm not going to go into all that because then I get another song. But I will look at a number and I will say it to myself. 77352, for instance, comma, 10, comma, 1640. And I'm supposed to remember that and write it down. And when I'm going to go type it in because I want to teleport to that new position, I have to type it in, but I can't remember it. So I have to write it down. But when I can't write things down, I say it in my head. Like, I'm going to remember this, so I say it over and over and over. But what I say and goes from what I see. So here we got what, what's involved in this. My eyes are seeing that. If I didn't repeat it in my head, like when I read, I always repeat every word in my head. I read out loud in my head, which makes me read slower, of course. But when I see a number and I think it so there goes to my eyes and then in my brain somewhere there's a translating part to come out my mouth and so I may say it or if it's coming in my ears it's even worse if it's in my ears because the auditory my auditory is really deficient meanwhile Willem's auditory is amazing and his eyes are deficient like he doesn't see where things are maybe it's just a man thing but, I don't know, maybe it's because I put things away and then he doesn't know where I put them. And that's sort of a problem. But anyway, we're going to get off into that then. But, so I'm trying to figure out the best way to deal with this dyslexia. I mean, I'm 66 and I've still got it. It's plagued my life my whole life. I've written numbers backwards. I see things wrong. I remember things wrong. My grandson... He watches um, Cup Hook and Pokemon. And there's a million different characters in these games or in these programs. And they've all got different colors and different parts. And then they transform into another thing with different colors and parts. And he can, he can sit and draw them. He can draw one after another after another exactly like they are with the name spelled right and like... He's been doing this, he's now seven, but he's been doing this since he was five. But he could read immediately. He's, he's really got a, I don't know if he's got a, a photographic memory. I always think of photographic memory as I don't have any film. <laughs> I have a photographic memory, I just don't have any film. How about you? 
So if you have a photographic memory, tell me what you think about having a photographic memory down in the comments below and like and subscribe because then my videos will be more visible to it. people. If you want to see videos, the only way you're going to see more of them is if you subscribe or if you like it. Anyway, I don't know how all that works, but I know when I go through my channel, the only ones that are really being seen all the time are the ones that have the most views. Of course, the ones that have the most views are not the best videos. I have deleted a lot of best view videos because they weren't the best videos. Like this Nuno felting one, that's been on there for so many years and it's it's got like 87,000 views now. But it's certainly not the best one. But anyway, once one gets to the top, it just goes from there. Like the how to get out of a kayak. How not to get, I changed it to how not to get out of a kayak because I end up tripping at the end and falling into the water. <sighs> and poor Willem, I, I get him to hold the camera and he's busy watching me and not watching the camera. <laughs> the camera's turned or he's just holding it and it's like, ha. <laughs> huh. But that was before the days of phones, you know. Before the days of phones, when I had a camera, I had a, a video camera and it had a, a thing that opened and you would watch the picture, but he would never watch the picture, so it was always facing down. Look at this. Have I run out of things to say? So tell me, do you have dyslexia? And is there a trick that you have learned that works? I should research dyslexia. I've been researching a lot of spiritual things lately, but that's a whole different thing. I have a lot of things to tell you. Maybe I should make lots of videos now. Maybe I will. I'm so glad I figured out how to do it. So when I cook, I figured out how to make gluten-free, rice-free, dairy-free bread. I can't have milk because it makes my joints hurt. I can't have rice because it makes my joints hurt. Actually, milk makes my muscles hurt too. And now I just learned that um, flaxseed, ground flaxseed, goes rancid very quickly, like within an hour after it's open, after it's ground. So you have to use it up right away or cook it right away. But ground flaxseed causes joint damage. Isn't that interesting? I started making this, um, there's a bread book, a book from, it's called Wheat Belly. And it's got recipes in there. And it, one of them has a bread that's made with almond flour. So I grind up almonds. All, grind up slivered almonds, not slivered, but those little chunks, those little long skinny chunks. What is it called? It's like like a cylinder, but it's not a cylinder. They have many sides, many facets. I wonder what the word for that is. Remember all those geometric shapes? If you know, put it in the comments. I will appreciate that. Oh, and have you watched Murdoch Mysteries? I love Murdoch Mysteries. And it's filmed in Canada. In fact, it's filmed in Coburg and in Toronto. And it, it's it got all this history. I don't really know a lot of Canadian history because I came from the States. And I, in the States, you don't learn about any countries except your own. Except maybe you learn the capitals of all the countries in the world. But you don't learn anything about them. But anyway, so I didn't learn anything about Canada. There's 10 provinces, and you probably haven't heard of the Yukon and Saskatchewan and Alberta and Manitoba, and you've heard of Ontario and Quebec, but not Prince Edward Island and New Brunswick and in, in, in Iqaluit. That's the newest province. Anyway, but in Murdoch Mysteries, um, I went to Coburg to try and see the locations, and then I went online and I and used Google Earth. Google Earth is good for that sort of stuff. But... Murdoch Mysteries, I found a book at the dump that is, look at this, The Canadian Invention. Hmm, that's interesting. And the Canadian Inventions book, is that backwards for you? Looks backwards to me. I don't know. But anyway, and in this book, like in the show, because it's set in 1900 or 1898 to 1904 or something like that, but the season, it's got 17 seasons, so I'm not sure how they work in that because it hasn't been seven, people are not 17 years old, older yet. But anyway, and in this book, there's a lot of inventions in here. And so he has many characters are in the, in the show, like um, 
well, there's this guy, James Pendrick, and he's always creating things. And so he creates the bullet, which is, um, it's like a car, but shaped like a bullet. And you get in and you put the thing down, I think, and you can go 60 miles an hour or something like that. Very, very fast. And then he, he has this one that he's invented that's in a, a, a vacuum. And you can go very fast, 400 miles an hour in the vacuum across from Toronto Island to Toronto. And, and, but in the, in the show, these all are inventions that fail. But, and he makes his own inventions, and he gives them names. And they're names that, and they joke about what it could be called, you know. But it's always, like, similar to what it's called now, but it's a little different. Anyway, and you can see, oh, that'll never come to take off. But, you know, it does, right? Like, television, I think something vision is... And they're starting to make movies with sound. And for headphones, they've got those, you know, the big, long... Um, you telephone, you pick up the handle, and you pick up the phone, you speak into the receiver, and you've got the, the big thing to your ear. Well, so their headphones are like two of those with a thing over the top, and they're watching a movie, and <gasps> they can hear the, the, the thunder, and they can hear the, the locomotive, and anyway, blah, blah, blah. But there's people in the book like Henry Ford, and Edison, Thomas Edison, and Roosevelt, and all these people, and all these inventions, the car is just coming out and becoming more, you know, and you still have to crank it, and... Anyway, in Georgia, they say crank the car, and to plug up your to plug in your your device, it's plug it up. Anyway, well, I've been talking to you for a while, so I guess I better go. Forty one minutes. Oh my gosh. Anyway, but for people that don't have very long attention span, this is good stuff, isn't it? Because <laughs> nothing lasts more than a few moments. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye. Like and subscribe. And I hope to hear from you. Comment down below. Now, how do I get out of this? X.